Hello everyone, welcome to the Atlas channel. This is part 2 of making a 3D game in the tower defense genre. Today we are going to create a grid for buildings. Be sure to subscribe to the channel, like this video and leave your questions in the comments. Firstly, let's create a prefab of the building. As long as we don't have a 3D models, I will use the primitives. So just create an empty object and inside of this object create a simple cube. In the card settings, you can now select this prefab. Go to the scripts folder and create a card manager script. First of all, you need to implement several interfaces that are responsible for interacting with objects. Next, I declare a field into which I will write the data from the script table object in order to spawn the required buildings. In the card holder class, in the create card method, you need to create an instance of the card manager class to write there the information from the script table object. Ok, now let's create a script building. Here I declare a field for the size of the building and a reference to the mesh renderer component. The set color method is needed to change the color of the building depending on whether or not you can put it on its current position. And the reset color method is needed to change the color of a building after it has been built. And the grid controller script is designed to record information about which positions are occupied by buildings. This class should be the only one in the scene and it will need access from the classes that are in the prefabs. So I use single tom pattern because of it. Then declare a two-dimensional array of type building. And I just noticed that the building class is named incorrectly. Go to the building script, select the class name and use Ctrl plus R. Set a new name and press enter. Be sure to create a property so this array can be changed from another class. And in the awake method, single tone is just initialized. Let's go back to the card manager and declare some fields. I strongly recommend you to write all values as I have, especially the grid size. 15 by 10 is ideal size in our case. In the awake method, we get a reference to the grid controller and initialize the grid array.
Okay, let's start with the onPointerUp method. As the name implies, it's uh, called when the user releases the left mouse button or removes his uh, finger from the screen. Here everything is simple. If we can build a building, we build it. If we can't, we delete the workpiece. the isPlace taken method. It will return a boolean value indicating whether the place is occupied or not. Ok, now let's go to the onPointerDAO method. Create a building workpiece. Then create an invisible plane along which the workpiece will move. Also, let the ray go to the point you clicked on the screen. If the ray and the plane intersect, then calculate the global coordinates to which you want to move the building. And I made it so that you can only move by integer coordinates. In the onDrag method we need the same logic, but we make it so that buildings cannot be placed outside the grid, on already occupied places and on places with odd coordinates. Ok, on the prefab of the building we transfer the building script, set the size of the building 2x2 two two, and I also transfer the mesh renderer component. I also create an empty object and name it as grid controller and of course transfer the grid controller script to this object. I also transfer the card manager script to the card prefab and let's check how it works. And as you can see, it works correct. Let's create another kind of building. Let it be just a sphere for now. For this sphere, we need to make all the same settings as with the cube.
Don't forget to create a card for the sphere and set it up too. All that's left to do is to check it all. That's all for today, thank you for watching, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe to the channel and ask what you're interested in in the comments. Goodbye.